let's have a word of prayer. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for your presence and all your blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We pray, O oh God, that as we come tonight, that we will hear the word, that we may apply the word to our everyday living. We thank you, Lord, for your people. We thank you for this place of worship. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon our lives, and we forever give you praise. We ask, O oh God, that you would just continue to uh, speak to our hearts, God, that we may be witnesses, that we may share yes, Jesus Lord. Christ to those that we encounter. And we thank you. We pray blessings over our families, our homes, our friends. We thank you for life. And we just give you the praise and we give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, God is our prayer tonight. Amen. amen. And amen. 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 We thank God tonight for our being here, and uh, we're so, so blessed to be back into the house of the Lord once again. Amen. God has uh, richly favored us and blessed us, and we thank God for that. And so tonight we want to uh, begin a new study, and uh, we're going to be here a while, and that is in the book of Proverbs. We want to walk through the Proverbs lessons and uh, look at some things through Proverbs. Proverbs is so rich and it's so uh, insightful that when we talk about Proverbs, uh, we talk about uh, some life lessons, we talked about uh, some uh, instructions uh, that the proverb uh, uh, chapters involve. And so we want to talk about that for a while, uh, the different lessons in Proverbs. So we want to start with chapter 1. But before we do that, we want to kind of give a little background about uh, the Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs is primarily, when we think of Proverbs, we uh, think of Solomon. And that Solomon uh, uh, was the writer of Proverbs. But Solomon uh, did not coin all of the Proverbs. He did a majority, it's same as when we think about Psalms. We think Psalms is something that David uh, wrote all of them, but not necessarily so. In, in this case, it's the same way. There were at least three known uh, contributors to Proverbs, three known uh, contributors. And we know that, first of all, that uh, in chapter 1, as we look at chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. So we identify one of the contributors to the book of Proverbs. Also, there is at least two other contributors, and one is found, uh, is a contributor in, in Proverbs chapter 30. His name is Agor, Agor, Agor. His name, his name means uh, 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 a gatherer or a collector. So it, uh, Proverbs 30 is uh, coined by him. And then also the last one is Proverbs 31. That is coined by Lemuel. Lemuel. Lemuel coined Proverbs 31 because this was lessons from his mother. Mm -hmm. And so his his name, Lemuel, his name means dedicated unto God. Amen. Dedicated unto God. And so it is, it is, it is, Lemuel is in association with another biblical name uh, that means also dedicated to God or given back to God, and that is Samuel. Mm -hmm. Samuel and Lemuel mm -hmm. are related in the sense that. They were dedicated unto God. And so we find here that there were three, at least three contributors to the writings of Proverbs. Writings of Proverbs. And so we're going to walk through Proverbs and hopefully gain some valuable, invaluable insight uh, uh, through Proverbs. And we're going to look at some things that we're already familiar with. We're going to look at some new things as we talk about Proverbs. Amen. And to kind of give you some background as it relates to the primary uh, uh, contributor uh, in that Solomon, and we know that Solomon 
is the son of David. He's the son of King David. Solomon is one of the sons that David had with Bathsheba. Amen. And so he is one of the sons uh, that David fathered uh, by her. And so uh, also we know that Solomon is the one who actually builds the temple of God. Uh, David gathered and collected a lot of the material, but uh, God did not allow him to build the temple, uh, but he placed it into the hands of his son, Solomon, to erect the temple. And so uh, one of the things when we talk about Proverbs, and we're going to get into it, Proverbs, when we talk about Proverbs, there's one word that stands out when we talk about Proverbs, and that is the word wisdom. That is the word wisdom. Amen? And when we talk about wisdom, because it, 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 it's so primary in the book of Proverbs, we automatically think about Solomon because the Bible said that he was a wise man. And by, and by the fact is that he was the wisest man on the face of the earth. Amen. And so Solomon is the major contributor. Agur is a contributor, uh, Proverbs 30, and Lemuel is a contributor, Proverbs 31. And so when we talk about Solomon, we know, uh, can anybody tell me, how did Solomon acquire his wisdom? How did he, amen, what, what was the acquisition of him uh, receiving his wisdom? Can anybody, you remember, uh, anybody can uh, relate that story? How did Solomon get his wisdom? He God. He had his choice of what he, he could have asked for anything, but he asked for wisdom. Right. Amen. Amen. He asked that God give him the ability to be able not only to, uh, to govern the people and to be able to uh, address the people. We found that over, uh, over in 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. And I just want to read just one one verse of that, 1 Kings chapter 3, is when Solomon is petitioning God, and God asked him to uh, just let me know what, what's your desire. What's your desire? And it says this, it says this in uh, 1 Kings chapter 3. <clears throat> Excuse me, 1 Kings chapter 3. And... Uh, And God, and he says, uh, in verse 9, he said, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern good and bad, for who is able to judge this, thy so great a people. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. So Solomon didn't ask for wisdom. He asked for the ability to judge the people properly and to be able to discern good and bad. Amen? Now, that sounds like wisdom to me. Amen? Mm -hmm. To be able to judge people and also to be able to discern good and bad. Well, that is, that is a component of wisdom. So we see here that Solomon, he asked God that, that God will empower him uh, to be a good king before the people. And because God, because he asked of God, God granted that, but then God also granted him great wealth, great uh, uh, riches. And so, uh, amen, that's how the acquisitions of wisdom came about in the life of Solomon. Solomon asked for it. He asked for it. Amen. He asked for wisdom. Amen. Now, in this same chapter of 1 first, first Kings chapter 3, as it relates to Solomon, 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 after God granted him wisdom, almost immediately his wisdom was put to the test. Amen? You remember that there were two women that had babies? Mm -hmm. And one uh, lady, she, uh, her baby died. She rolled over on her baby at night and the baby died. And now she wanted to claim somebody else's baby. And they brought before the king Solomon. And Solomon said, simply, amen, 
All right, since you said it's your baby and she said it's her baby, well, let's just cut it in half. Uh, and then and then the true mother spoke up and said, no, don't kill the baby, let her have it. And so, so Solomon's wisdom was put on display, and the Bible said that because of that one act, that he was exalted and he was esteemed before the people, and they were in awe of him because of his great wisdom. Amen. And so we see here that he had right there from, from the get-go, the fame of his wisdom went out. Amen. Among the people. Among the people. So Solomon, Solomon was, as the Bible described, he was uh, the uh, he 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 uh, he received wisdom. Uh, he had the fame of wisdom, but then also. As we, as we talk about Solomon, amen, uh, Solomon, even though he was the wise man or the wisest of man, amen, the lack thereof or the lack of the application of wisdom was his downfall. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Can anybody remember his downfall? Mm -hmm. What happened? His downfall? Solomon Though he was the wisest of men, see, you can, you, can, uh, you can have wisdom, but if you do not apply it, if you don't apply wisdom, amen, it, it, it does you no good. Solomon, Solomon, the Bible said that Solomon had 700 wives, uh, 300 girlfriends. And, 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 a, and a host of other ladies at his disposal. Solomon loved beautiful women. Amen. He loved beautiful women. But, but then it says he did not apply wisdom because he wanted to uh, uh, stay in the good graces of not only the women but also from the nations in which they come from. The Bible said that Solomon began to erect idols and worship their gods. Mm -hmm. And that displeased God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that eventually became the downfall of Solomon. And you can't imagine. Say, well, how can the wildest of man allow that to happen to him to where, amen, he, 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 he was just uh, consumed by those, amen, the influencing of those around him. How can that happen? Well, uh, you can, you can, you know, there again, you can have wisdom, but don't apply it. Don't apply it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, because there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people that we think that they should be a person of wisdom, amen, but they're not. Wisdom, amen, just because somebody is intelligent mm -hmm. does not mean that they have wisdom. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. You know, because you probably know people that you said, man, he got a lot of book sense, but no yeah. common mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He can do figures right and left, but he can't keep a dime. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's what a lot of people are. So, amen. So when we talk about wisdom, you cannot, you cannot, amen, you cannot say that some, just because somebody is intelligent, that they got a good uh, ACT score, SAT score, or they maxed out on the test, it doesn't mean that they have wisdom or know how to apply wisdom. Mm -hmm. Amen? And so we have to understand that when we talk about wisdom, Solomon had wisdom. Solomon knew how to handle business. Solomon, see, and one of the reasons why Solomon married all those women, as we said earlier, because he married these women from these different nations, well, then he was at peace with them. Mm -hmm. Amen? He was at peace with them, so he was wise in his strategies. But he was not wise in the application when it came to a man uh, uh, not honoring no other God besides the living God. Right. Amen.
And so, and so that was his downfall. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is possible for a man to have wisdom and not use it. Yeah. It is possible. Is that right? Yeah. Because, amen, because we see that here. We see it here that where his downfall, he did not apply wisdom. The application of wisdom has to be in place. Amen. It has to be, it has to be in place. We have to apply wisdom. Praise God. It does me no good to, uh, to praise it. Lord, give me wisdom. Yeah. And then when it's time to apply the application of wisdom, I don't follow through. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. And then I go back to, Lord, why did that happen? Or why didn't that did not, not happen? Well, it's because I did not apply wisdom. Did not apply wisdom. Amen. All right. Now, as we said, we're starting a new study in Proverbs, and we're going to look at Proverbs, praise God. And we're going to uh, uh, look at some life lessons through the book of Proverbs for a while now. Amen? Now, when we talk about Proverbs, or you look at just the word proverb, now, don't look at it biblically. When we look at a proverb, what comes to mind when you hear the word proverb? I know that we kind of, you know, look at the Bible, but, but when we... When we talk about a proverb, what comes to your mind when you hear the word proverb? John. What is that? Japanese people. You're talking about an oriental proverb or ancient proverb or, or eastern, eastern culture proverb, you know, some type of life lesson, some type of, some type of reference to, to, uh, uh, to uh, 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 wisdom. Uh, or some type of uh, instructions, praise God. But when we talk about the proverb, a proverb it is it is a it is a brief uh, it is a brief lesson. It is a brief, concrete lesson that that somebody may give you. You know, uh, 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 they may call them proverbs in certain uh, uh, sectors. But you know, we used to call them uh, 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 to where, like if grandma would say something, mm -hmm. like uh, you know, if you if you you know, I just throw one on top of my head. If if you sleep with dogs, you're gonna get fleas. You're gonna get fleas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or or you know, uh, uh, if you if you if you uh. If you hang around, or whatever, you know. If you if you throw if you if you if you uh if you throw mud, you know, something's gonna get on you. You know these little short sayings that are life instructions, and that's what Proverbs is really is. If we look at the the book of Proverbs biblically, there are life instructions that that the Bible makes reference to. Amen? Amen. Can somebody give me what is the main theme of the book of Proverbs? The main theme. Okay, amen. 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 Let's go to chapter 4 right quick and look at verse 7. Amen. The main theme of Proverbs is to get us to get wisdom. That's the main the main theme, it said, wisdom is the principal theme. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. Amen? That is the central principal theme of the book of Proverbs, is wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen? God wants us to obtain wisdom. In every, not, 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 amen, not just in, in, in some situations or circumstances, but God wants us to get wisdom in every facet of our life. He wants us to apply wisdom. Amen? Hallelujah. And wisdom has nothing to do with being spiritual. It has nothing to do, amen, with being a biblical scholar. Amen. God wants us to apply wisdom wisdom in every area of our life. So Proverbs, Proverbs, in a nutshell, it involves wisdom. It involves wisdom. Amen? Now, now let's go to chapter 1. Back to chapter 1 as we begin to look at this 
Amen. And we're going to identify some uh, some key focuses that we're going to deal with in the weeks to come. But but let's look at the purpose of Proverbs. The purpose of Proverbs is, is, is found in the first six verses. The first six verses of Proverbs tells us the purpose of the entire book. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Amen. Here is the purpose. Yeah. To know wisdom and instructions. Mm -hmm. To perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instructions of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtly to the, uh, to the simple to the young man knowledge and discretion. Amen? In other words, he said, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall obtain unto wise counsel. Mm -hmm. To understand a proverb and the interpretation of the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Amen? This is, this is the purpose of Proverbs. Proverbs, amen, God instructed Solomon and the other contributors to the book of Proverbs, amen, to write down uh, life lessons to help us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We used, to, we used to hear all the time, you know, perhaps you said it to your children or your, your mother said it to you. You know, a bark lesson <laughs> is what? Not Amen. You, you, you have to understand that, uh, you know, or, or these little saying like a, like a hard head <laughs> makes for, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <it's all fine. laughs> you know, these little proverb type sayings and lessons, praise God, to teach us, hallelujah, to teach us concerning the application of wisdom. Amen. Wisdom. Hallelujah. And so here, 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 he gives us, he gives us, he gives us the purpose, the purpose of, of Proverbs that we may learn some things in life. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I mean, you have people, you have people that God has blessed to live. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old. Amen. And they and they are they are repeat offenders as far as not learning life lessons. Yes. Amen. Not not getting, you know, uh, uh, one of the worst uh, individuals that can be. And that is, how can I say this nicely? It is somebody that God has graced with long life. And they have yet to learn how to embrace the instructions and the principles of life. Because they'll keep making the same mistakes, the same mistakes, the same mistakes over again. Because they fail to apply wisdom. Amen. Look what it says in the first two verses of chapter 1 again. It says, to know wisdom and instructions, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instructions of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to wear. Amen. In other words, the proverb writer is saying that when we fail uh, uh, to uh, to uh, embrace wisdom and instructions. Hallelujah. See, it is, it is, so, it is so easy uh, to, to be led by your own thoughts and your own wits and your own intellect. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, when you learn a lesson in life, Sometimes, amen, yes, yes. When you learn a lesson, you won't forget. See, and, and see, and that's why sometimes you have to back off from folks. And say, let them learn. 
I tried to tell them they got to learn on their own. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Amen. Because all of us, all of us have learned some lessons, and man, I won't do that again. Well, I'll know next time. And there's some lessons where you learn once and you hold on to that for the rest of your life. Because it was so impactful. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, now let's look at something here because since we already know that wisdom is the principal thing and wisdom is, is, is what God uh, wants us to have, let's look at some wisdom scriptures here because uh, you don't have to be the smartest, you don't have to be the brightest, you don't have to be the most intelligent, you don't have to have the highest IQ to, to, uh, to be a person of wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Some of the wisest people we know didn't graduate college. That's right. Some didn't graduate high school. Mm -hmm. Some didn't get through grammar school. <laughs> but they're wise. They're wise because of their life experiences. They're wise because they have gone through some things and they've learned life lessons along the way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want tonight, I want to start as we look at wisdom. What is your, when you think of the word wisdom, what comes to mind? What is your definition? Or how would you describe wisdom? When you hear the word wisdom, that we've already identified that is not intellect. Do you have to have intellect? To be a wise person, do you have to have it to that? When we talk about wisdom, huh? don't be afraid to respond. I mean, that's no, you know, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not taking grades or whatever. I mean, when you talk about wisdom, we talk about wisdom, what comes to mind? You know, because Somebody, somebody interpretation of, or definition of wisdom may be based upon, you know, they said, oh man, he's a, he's a sharp fellow. You know, he's, he, he's a wise man. He's a wise man. Well, when we talk about wisdom, wisdom, as we said earlier, wisdom is not intellect. Wisdom is more than wit. Wisdom is, amen, it's more, it, it, it's, it's more, it's even more than common sense. We talk about wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom, it is, it is, it is being able to discern uh, that which is good and being able to put everything in its proper, proper purpose. Amen. When we understand how life works. When we understand how the word of God works, amen, that's, that's, that's wisdom, that's wisdom. When we begin to understand, hallelujah, how, uh, 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 how biblical principles work and how we can apply them, wisdom comes down to application, knowing what, when, how, that's wisdom. Hallelujah. It, it, it's, it's not about, it's not about, uh, uh, amen, obtaining some level, amen, of higher education, but it's about, amen, it is, it is an instinct, praise God, amen. The Bible said wisdom is a spirit. It's a spirit, praise God. And when we talk about wisdom, there is, there, is a, there is a call of wisdom where wisdom is calling out to people, but everybody is not listening. Everybody is not listening to wisdom. Amen? Now, now go, to, go to chapter 1 again, and, and, and uh, we're going to look at some verses here because we're going to talk about the call of wisdom, the value of wisdom, the security of wisdom, the rewards of wisdom, and we're going to talk about some other things in this first segment here as we talk about wisdom because wisdom is the principal theme of Proverbs and so we're going to look at that and discuss wisdom here. Amen. In chapter 1 
of Proverbs and verse 20. It says, wisdom crieth out. She uttered her voice in the streets. Amen. Praise God. You ever heard the term street smart? Amen. That, that they, they, they have learned over the course of time, amen, how the streets work. You know, I tell my son, I used to tell my son, you know, I tell my son and some of his boys that grew up in our neighborhood, you know, and they want to be all bad and macho, you know. I said, y'all not street. Y'all didn't grow up in the street. I said, y'all, hey, but y'all didn't see some movies and listen to the hip hop gang and all that kind of stuff. I said, y'all have no idea what the streets is all about. Y'all think you do. I mean, but there are people that that's their whole life. They was reared, amen, from amen. There are generations that have lived that type of culture, that type of lifestyle. And they know the ins and outs. Amen. They know the ins and outs. And if you're not from that world, from that culture, amen, you're going to stick out. <laughs> and they're going to have you, amen, they're going to take your lunch money. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20 he said wisdom cried out and uttered their voice in the street she cried in the chief place of concourse in the openings of the gate in the city she uttered her words saying how long ye simple ones will you love simplicity and the scorn of delight in their scorn and fools hate knowledge isn't that something Fools hate knowledge. And there are people who love simplicity. Amen? They love simplicity. They love, praise God, they love just, just, uh, uh, you know, they're just, they're just naive. They're gullible. My wife and I was watching something, uh, what was that something you were watching, dear, where, where this lady said that she came across this lady who found some money. She found some money, and uh, it was just an old pigeon drop they did on her. You know, they found some money, and then another lady came up and said, well, well, we can split the money, but you got to have some good faith money. So, you know, go to your bank, and, and we'll go to our bank, and we'll meet behind this place, and I'll show you mine, you show me yours, we all put it in the same bag, we're going to meet back up. Come on, amen, that old pigeon drop. Amen. And that's been around for years. I've known people that have fallen for that. Amen. Amen. One tried to get me one time. <laughs> Hey man, this African talking, he was Nigerian. He come up and he talking, talking all broken English, you know what I'm saying? And he pulled out his pocket, big old, walk, big old ball by that much of money. You know. And I knew right off what it was. You know what I'm saying? Just some money wrapped around paper. And he tried to get me, he said, I, I, I found this, I found this, I found this, I found this, and I split it with you. You know, if I said, I said, I ain't got time for that. 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 Amen. You got to, you got to use wisdom. He said here, he said, wisdom is crying out for these simple folk. Amen. He crying out for these folk. These naive, gullible. Huh? Fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my word. See, this is wisdom. Wisdom, amen, wants to give herself to folk, but folk turn her back. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the Bible calls a person like that, but it says here, he said he, said he calls him a fool. Calls him a fool. You know, he tell us we're growing up, don't call him a no fool. Why the Bible call them fools? They fools. 
They're running, amen, they're running from wisdom. They're running from wisdom. They're running from knowledge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look what it says in verse 24. He said, because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. My, 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 my. But ye have set it not on all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mark when you fear, when your fear comes. Amen. And so we see here that wisdom cries out. Wisdom is a spirit. And those that embrace her, she will embrace them. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd rather, I rather be taught a lesson than have to buy a lesson. Amen. Teach me. I, amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It's so important. It's so important that we, we learn wisdom and that we get wisdom. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, uh, go with me over to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. It is, it is, it is, uh, as we said, wisdom is a spirit. It's a spirit because it, it, as it relates to, as it relates to Jesus, as it relates to how Jesus came uh, down through the family and the line of, of, of of David where it began to prophesy Isaiah began to prophesy concerning Jesus he said here in the, uh, chapter 11 of Isaiah verse 1 he said there shall come forth a, a, a rod out of the stem of Jesse a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord so we see here that Isaiah, it, it makes reference and wisdom as a spirit, amen, as a spirit that will come upon. Now, now Solomon, God empowered him with the spirit of wisdom, but when Solomon walked in disobedience, wisdom left. Wisdom left. Amen. Wisdom left. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now, when we talk about the call of wisdom, how wisdom is calling out, wisdom is always calling out to the believer that the believer will walk in wisdom as it relates to the word of God. Hallelujah. Application is everything. It, 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 it does you no good to, to, to have the formula and don't apply it. It does you no good to have the principles and don't apply them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Wisdom calls out to us. God wants to give us the ability to walk in wisdom every day. Amen. Praise God. Not intellect. Not intellect. Amen. Yes, it's good to Amen. It's good to be smart. It's good to have intelligence. It's good to have, amen, uh, book sense and all of that. Praise God. But God wants us to walk in wisdom. Solomon didn't have, amen. Solomon didn't, amen. It doesn't say that he had a master or PhD, but Solomon knew how to gather all of those workers, all of those skilled men to build that temple. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now let's go to chapter 2 right quick of, of, of Proverbs. Chapter 2 right quick. And because we know that uh, wisdom is the principal thing, but let's, uh, 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 wisdom also, wisdom is also very valuable. Wisdom have value. Amen. Give me a wise person over, over an intelligent person anything. Amen. Amen. Give me a wise person over somebody who's just intelligent. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Glory to God. Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1. He said, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding, yea, if thou cry after knowledge, and lifted up thy voice for understanding. Y'all, people are not pursuing knowledge and understanding. No. People are not, not pursuing wisdom. Hallelujah. I was I was reading, I was reading an article. You know, every time, every time the lottery, uh the the the, the lottery get to a certain, you know, high dollar amount, uh, somebody put out articles. Uh, as it relates to what what has happened to our previous winners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just shook my head at some of those people that have won millions of dollars and broke today. Broke, yeah. mm -hmm. broke today. They didn't apply wisdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Didn't apply wisdom. Oh. Now, I, I'm not talking about just somebody who just won a few million. I'm talking about people that have won tens of thousands of millions of dollars. And they've lost it all. Lost it all. Amen. Lost it all. Because they did not apply wisdom. Now, all of these people that have won the lottery, all of them, uh, they were, amen, a lot of them were very intelligent people. School educated. Amen. School educated. Masters. Bachelors. Degrees. Skilled people. My grandfather had a proper credential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. You know what? He said you can always he didn't say man, but he said you can always tell a man that never had anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They get a little bit, you know. Yeah, you don't say you about to say the N word. <laughs> I don't know that's, that's the word he used. Hey, Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can tell. Hallelujah. This guy, this one guy, this one guy won, uh, he won $1.2 million. Mm -hmm. And and within, within, Two within, months. yeah, within three months, he was uh, broke. You were back living in a trailer. Mm -hmm. He just he, he just parted. Spin, 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 spin. You know, well, you know it, it, it is it is true. It, it's a true saying: a fool and his money. That's right. Oh. <laughs> it's still true. Yeah. The <laughs> soon part. Uh -huh. You know, and, and and so and so, people are not pursuing wisdom. They're not pursuing knowledge. And they're not pursuing understanding. Look what it says in verse 2. He said, so that thou may I, I incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply the heart to understand me. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. To understand me. Mm -hmm. And so there, there is a value. All right. Let me go on down here because our time is almost up. He said, yea, if thou cried after knowledge and lift up thy voice for understanding, if thou seeketh her as silver and, and searcheth for her as, a, <coughs> as for as for hid treasures. Amen. Pursue wisdom. Mm -hmm. Treat it as a valuable commodity. Hallelujah. Amen. Treat it as a valuable commodity. Amen. Hallelujah. A few, a few years ago, or last year, uh, I, got, I got hooked back on uh, I used to, before I got married, and even some after I got married, I used to uh, be a corn collector. You know, old corns, rare corns, mm -hmm. something like that. And I had a nice little uh, uh, collection. But I got into that, so last year I kind of got back into it. I'm, I'm gonna get back into it as the, as the weather, amen. But I, I went and bought me a, uh, Metal detector, oh, okay. you know, yeah. and uh, I would find old uh, 
uh, yeah, I found some coins out here, you know, because I knew that it was an old house here. Uh -huh. I knew some where some older houses were, you know, and so I'm going out there and I'm finding. Well, you know, well, you find a lot of pennies, but just the average penny, it, it really doesn't have much value. It has to be certain type of pennies, you know, what we call wheaties, what we call Indian heads, mm -hmm. you know, and, and but our prize, our prize discovery is uh, is is silver, silver, and and it has to be predated. Any any, any corn, any corn for the most part that is pre nineteen sixty four is silver. It's silver. Yeah. If you find if you got any corn that is pre sixty four, it has silver. And, and well, the whole, uh, the older the corn is, you have 99 percent, uh -huh. and then as you get closer to up in the 60s, then they may have 75 percent, yes. or they may have 60 some percent. But it's silver, mm -hmm. and it has more value than than these corns now. They just face value, and so that's what I look for. I, you know, I look for silver or gold or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And you know, and in time past, you know, uh, uh, you know, you can find gold rings and a lady in loss, uh, you know, gold rings or diamond rings and things like that of of of, of, uh, of great value. And so, uh, you know, and those are the things that most coin collectors and those, amen, that do treasure hunting, they pursue those things. Well, we we ought to pursue wisdom. Just like we pursue material valuable things. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Because wisdom, praise God, will help you keep those values. That's right. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It, it, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like uh, when you have wisdom, well, then you know how to, you know when mm -hmm. to do. You know what to do. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. You won't do before time. Now, notice what he says here in verse 4 again. He said, if thou seekest her, you got to seek it. You got to seek wisdom. You got to ask God for wisdom. You got to pursue wisdom. You got to apply wisdom. He said here, if thou will seek her as silver and, and search for her as for hidden treasure, mm -hmm. then shalt thou understand the fear or the, uh, or the reverence or the awe of the Lord mm -hmm. and find the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. So there is a value to wisdom. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's just not just being smart. That's right. No, not. A lot of smart people. So do. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. We got we got we got uh, we got a lot of smart people in public office. <laughs> <laughs> but have no wisdom. Amen. Have no wisdom. Skilled people, educated people, but have no wisdom. Amen. Verse 7, the next says that. Yeah. <laughs> he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is the buckle of them that walk uprightly. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand that God wants us to pursue wisdom and hear the spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. See, see, sometimes uh, wisdom come into place when you have to make a life decision. Life decision. A life decision is not solely made because the numbers add up. Okay. Yeah. Amen? Amen. The numbers add up. Yes. Hallelujah. The numbers may add up, but is it the right time? Mm. And that's where a lot of us fail to see it right there. Because they meant, hey, everything lined up, the numbers look good, everything there, everything there, and you know, 
but it's not the right time. Right time. One of my nieces had a car repossessed. She working part time at a burger place. She goes and buy a practically brand new car. And the salesman knew this. He knew she was working part time. But you know, they can they can work out all kind of deals to get you in a car. You know. And he knew she was working part time. She knew she was working part time. You know. And and, and uh, so he took a little money, down payment. I don't know. I forgot how much the note was. Well, it was a bit on top of that. She had a note, and then she didn't pay the sales tax. <laughs> he didn't take care of that. Right. So she had to pay the sales tax. So she didn't pay the sales tax. You know, she had an apartment. She had to pay rent, had to pay utilities, had a cell phone. <laughs> now she got a car note. Now she got to pay over twelve hundred dollars sales tax. She said my house. Oh, she said your house. Okay. She said my house. Okay, she said. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. But then she got the car people. Uh -huh. See what I'm saying? Then the plot wisdom. Bunch of her. Then, then the plot wisdom. Amen. Then the plot wisdom to that. You know, and I understand that that they're young. Amen. Well, there's some young fools and some old fools. Oh, I Amen. 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 That's right. Uh, because because we fail to apply wisdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so God wants us to understand the value of wisdom. Wisdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I did. A, I did a. I did a, a, a little test with my children, and uh, I, you know, and so we we had X number of dollars. We're gonna say at the end of the week, we're gonna see who got the most money left over. <laughs> you know, and of course I won. Yeah, you know because they didn't. You know they don't know how to apply wisdom, but I was trying to teach them a lesson. Amen. That if you discipline yourself, amen, you can hold a dollar. Yeah. That's right. You can hold a dollar. Yeah. Amen. That's hard for him. You don't have to buy. You don't have to buy top chef all the time. That's right. Amen. You don't have to buy name, name brand you know, all the time. That's right. You know what I mean? Amen. You don't you don't have to you don't have to buy, amen, the most expensive all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I used to, I used to, I used to, you know, I used to, uh, uh, I used to, uh, all the time, at the end of the week, I used to, I, you know, I could go back in my week and tally up everything I spent. Everything I spent. You know what I'm saying? I do that from time to time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of just see where your money go. Yeah. And then you say, oh man, I'm spending too much money over here. Mm -hmm. I gotta come back and eat now. That's right. I'm giving my money to these folks. Mm -hmm. These fast food places. Uh -huh. Man, for lunch, ten dollars a day. You know what I'm saying? Spend ten dollars a day for lunch. I said, man, at the end of the week, that's all fifty dollars. <laughs> Ain't only made fifty that week. <laughs> Just for lunch. <laughs> Just for lunch. You know what I'm saying? And so you have to start applying wisdom. That's it. Amen. Applying wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I would tell my children, I said, y'all got to learn how to pinch. Uh, so you got to learn how to pinch off your money. If you mm -hmm. got a little bit, you got to pinch off of it mm -hmm. until the next payday. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to pinch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Wisdom will teach you how to pinch off your money. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, you got paid on Friday and Monday, you broke. Some Friday evening. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand the value of wisdom, amen? And so God wants us to get wisdom, to get wisdom, lay hold of it, pursue it like silver, search for it like a, like a hidden treasure. Yes, Lord. Wisdom, amen? 
I don't want to die an old fool. I don't want to die an old fool. Hallelujah. I want to Amen. be able. Amen. Do we miss it sometimes? Yes, we do. Sure. Amen. We miss it sometimes. But I believe that most of us have lived long enough that what we've learned some valuable lessons mm -hmm. as it relates to the application of wisdom. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me give you one, one more scripture here. Praise God. Look at, look at verse 10, Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 10. Praise God. Hallelujah. It said, when wisdom enter into thy heart, and the knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Isn't it a wonderful experience that when you have applied wisdom, and you've seen the outcome of that application? It is beautiful. Amen? <laughs> it is a wonderful experience, praise God, and when, when, when you use wisdom, mm -hmm. and you see the outcome of that, hallelujah. Amen. That is, amen. That is such a great reward that when you can apply wisdom and you can you can hold your head up high and you can enjoy, amen, uh, 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 the application of wisdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look, look at verse 11. He said, discretion shall preserve thee. <coughs> Understanding shall keep thee. Amen. A lot of people don't, don't know about discretion. No, they don't. That's right. Discretion. Mm -hmm. Discretion in business. Discretion in your affairs. Amen. As you go through life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't tell folk everything. <laughs> I know folk that will tell folk everything. Hallelujah. I know folks that have told folks their ideas. Mm -hmm. And somebody that took it oh. and ran with it. Stole their business out of you. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't use discretion. Didn't know how to hold. Didn't know when to release certain things. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And that's so that's so so valuable. So valuable. Praise God. We have to use wisdom when to when to close our mouth and keep our mouth shut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. It is so, so important. Amen. We're going to stop here and we're going to get in to some real good meat on next week as we talk about, as we talk about wisdom. We're going to get into some things as it relates to uh, where the Proverbs writer talk about the foolish man and, and, and those that, that uh, uh, would not adhere to the instructions of wisdom. What is the outcome of being a fool? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Glory to God. You know, one of the great lessons we learn in life and where we can come to and say, yes, I made a mistake. Yes, I missed that one. But I won't miss it again. Yes, I won't let that happen to me again. You know what I'm saying? We learn, we learn, learn the lessons. lessons right? You know? You know? And it, it, it is so, so important that we learn that where all of us may have been foolish, mm -hmm. but don't become a fool. Amen. There's a big difference. Amen. Amen. We may have acted foolishly, but don't be a fool. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Big difference. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. Amen. Oh. Amen. Let's stop right here. We're going to take, take some prayer concerns tonight. If there be any prayer concerns tonight, we want to pray. Let's continue to, to uh, lift up. Uh, uh, Sister Sullivan, uh, in, in our prayer, Amen. 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 Any other prayer concerns? Brother Fred, Brother Fred McCray, continue to pray uh, for Brother Fred. Donnie Sullivan, no relation that we know of. Yeah. Okay, you said Donnie? Yes, sir. She had a heart attack. Who? Who was that? Sister Sullivan, Donnie Sullivan. Sister Brenda is not feeling well. Okay. That's Hogan? Yes, sir. All right. Amen. And Elder Williams is not feeling well. All right. Amen. Let's 
stand and pray for these persons tonight. <clears throat> Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your word. Father, we come to intercede on behalf of these individuals that are going through difficult times right now. Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. God, we simply lift them up before you. We lift up Sister Sullivan, Donnie Sullivan, Fred McRae, Brenda Hogan, and uh, Reginald Williams. We lift them up before you tonight. Father, you know them by name. You know their situations. You know how they feel right now. I ask, oh God, that you lay hands upon them yes. and speak into their life. Mm -hmm. I pray that the healing virtue of Christ will begin to flow through their bodies right now. Heal every ill in the name of Jesus. Say to the Lord, rebuke you tonight. We bind the enemy, Lord. We bind every sickness, every infirmity. Oh, we bind every disease. We bind every affliction. Yeah. We bind every malady of the body in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I speak, God, the words of Christ. Be thou made whole in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We speak that over Sister Sullivan. Be made whole. Mm -hmm. We speak that over Donnie Sullivan. Be thy mm -hmm. made whole. Mm -hmm. We speak it over Brother Fred McRae. Be thy made whole. We speak that over Sister Brenda Hogan. Be thy made whole. We speak it over Reginald Williams, be thou made whole in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord, right now. We release the word of God over their lives. We cover them under the blood of Jesus right now, Father. I pray that, Lord, that whatever the symptoms, whatever the prognosis, whatever the diagnosis, God, we believe your report. Your report says, by his stripes we are healed. Your report says, God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Yes, yes, your, re your report says, Father, hallelujah, that healing is the children's bread. Yes, yes. And, Father, we declare that tonight over every child of God, not only those on this list, but all those, oh God, that's of the household of faith that may be going through physical challenges yes, right now. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Every family that's represented here tonight, every family that is connected to this house, I pray health, I pray wealth, I pray, pray wholeness be theirs tonight in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just bind the enemy tonight off your people and we declare the blessings of God shall be theirs in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. Amen. So, Father, we give you praise for what you're going to do. We thank you, Father, that you are yet healing. We thank you that you're yet, yet delivering. And we just praise you for it right now. We believe that they're going to be delivered. We believe, God, that you're going to raise them up and give them a testimony. I thank you for that right now. Amen. And I give you the praise. I give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. You're doing all right. You have to do it all before I go out Friday. Oh, my goodness. I just, hey, my mind. Try to get it all right. But today, yesterday I got out of there by four. Today it was yeah. by five. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm gonna do my best to get out. Yes, I am. Uh -huh. I gotta bring you your uh -huh. own face. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yes, okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Used to wear it here because of water. But I got all cold and He got wet. Oh. And he had to get on the road a couple hours after that. Yeah. And that didn't make it any better. No, it didn't. Sister Fancy, you're dropping trash, darling. Come on. Let me get a book. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick it out there. Okay. The trash. <laughs> I'm going out the You front might put door. it in your purse. <laughs> I'm going to go out the front, too. <laughs> Well, I have to keep my big buddy. He, he yeah. told me he was going out. I, we, we chatted a little keep while. Keep him in prayer. Have to. Yeah. We need it, all of us. Absolutely. But I know he needed from what he tell me what he had to go. And I know he, he, he works hard, but a lot of times working hard is here is not the same as here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we doing both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've done it. I know too. I've been here a long time. Yeah. I need a birthday again. It seems like I'm getting one every other day. Now. <laughs> oh, you got to September. <laughs> I've got September, and September looks like it's coming around fast. <laughs> All right. Tell him, Nello. All right. All right. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Cut the thing off. <laughs> 